<sighs> I went to six different stores this morning looking for a new microphone in hopes that some of that noise would be blocked out. Is it working? No, I can definitely hear the uh, definitely hear the puppies. No, just one. The the older asshole. <sighs> but she's your asshole. Yeah, he's been in a mood the last couple of days. I'm gonna say it's the full moon. Oh, you know, for sure. I mean, every everything's bad. Everything's happened to me bad because it's the full moon. We'll just go with that. Hey, it's fun to blame something. It makes it seem a little easier. Oh, yeah. All right. So episode 12. We had something did I, like... Did, did I see that we had a whole bunch of downloads and listens and people 80, are actually starting to listen to this thing? 85 downloads last week alone. All right. Which well, was far the best week. And Rich will probably think it's all because of him, but. Well, he does have that sort of ego. <laughs> it was probably partially because of him. I'm surprised Mark hasn't chimed in to see if he can outdo him. <laughs> uh, so, how was your week, bud? Uh, let's start with you. Let's just. Aww. Yours was busier. Let's just start with you. Busier? I don't know about. Well, it was okay. Um, It was, I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, I mean, it was, for the most part, it was a normal week for us. Um, the farewell tour is uh, kicking off into full swing. Oh, yes. Um, last time at a lot of our regular locations. So, um, yeah, it's a, we usually are a little bit busier. So, I mean, yeah, we had decent sales days every day. Um, Did people come out for your farewell, farewell tour at their last, lo at the last location? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, we had the same thing last year. Every time we were at a location for the last time, it was busier than normal. Um, Good. Um, so um, we kind of prepared for it a little bit better this year, at least at some locations. Um, yeah, we had a decent a decent week. I mean, even with some crappy weather days, um, a lot of wind and spit and rain and stuff, and um. But yeah, it was Saturday we had a wedding. Uh, I think their final count ended up being probably 160 after they had cancellations that week. Um, it was chilly Saturday. Well, they had a lot of people from out of town. They said they had cancellations from down in Florida from the hurricane. Um, oh, yeah. Some of their stuff. So, um, but yeah, as I was, uh, so they wanted family style service. Um, which just means we're putting everything on platters onto individual tables. So there's 20 tables. So we have 20 platters of, or 20 serving dishes of mac and cheese and beans and pork and brisket. And everybody passes it around their individual tables and we go that way. Oh, so it's like serving family style, basically. Exactly. Um, huh. So I didn't hear that. Part of your story. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm talking to myself mostly. I, I know you don't listen to me, Bert. Um, I love you. So, so they rented all the dishes, all the platters, everything. Um, so it was going to be me, Chris, and Pam going down to do it. Um, since everybody was going to ride in one vehicle, I was moving some stuff around my uh, garage and stuff to make room for cars. And I uh, <laughs> was lifting a pallet, a heavy pallet. Um, and it slipped out of my hand and it landed pretty well square on my foot wearing only Crocs. Um, that's what this barbecue is. My, my, <laughs> <laughs> my wife was pretty positive that I might have broken something, um, in her nurse opinion. Um, that was back and forth. Good to have one of those in the house. What's that? It's good to have one of those in the house. A little bit. Um, maybe a little overcautious, <laughs> um, but I get it, That's fine. especially after the issue with my, uh, my finger, which, yeah, anyways, um, so I just, yeah, I decided that I was going to try to find some 
replacement help and some extra help. Um, so Pam's husband, Denny, who has done a couple of catering stuff, drop offs with Pam before um, came along. And uh, since this wedding was an hour and a half away down by where I used to work, um, I made some calls to some former co-workers to see if they would be able to. Um, and I got a brother and a girlfriend of that brother of a co-worker. So a co-worker's brother and his, and his girlfriend uh, helped us out. Um, and really, it all worked out probably for the best that I hurt myself because um, they said they barely got food out on time as it was with the five of them. Oh, wow. Chris said that we would never would have been able to do it with the three of us. Oh, my gosh. Because there was so much to do. Um, yeah. So a lesson learned from my part. Um, he said even another person would have been monumentally helpful. Um, so, yeah, family style, you definitely need extra, extra hands. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. But turns out there was nothing broken in my foot. Um, it was swollen pretty good. Also been uh, battling a between a very mild fever to a awful fever over the last three days. So um, things have been good. It was a good. It was a good week to have a a second an extra day off because we took Sunday off because we knew the wedding was going to be a little bit later. Where are you going? Sorry. <laughs> I just got home. I got to make sure my dog is all set. All right. All right. So th is this the first time you ever did family style? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we had charged them more for it because we had planned on an extra person. Yeah. Um, but not five or four extra people. So um, now I know. And sometimes yeah, this is how you learn these things and Fortunately, I mean, it was all good, and the bride was very happy, Chris said, and um, yeah, so now, yeah, now we make a note for the next time someone requests family style. We've only had, this is only one. We've never been asked about it before, so um, I'm not sure how soon it will come up again, or if this is kind of trending that way, but. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting dynamic, I guess. I've never. I guess I've never not heard of that, but never had anything like that asked of me before. I, I mean, from their standpoint, it's a very efficient way to do it. Everybody yeah. eats at the same time. I mean, it's pretty much like plated service, more or less. Yeah, so I mean, that, doing to everybody's eating while you're doing toast. You don't have to. And you, yeah, the buffet. Everybody was. They were clearing plates by six thirty. Dinner was at six. Right. Who who took the plates out? Like who did all the? You guys did you guys provide everything too? No, they rented everything. So uh, when they booked us, she sent us the catalog and told us to let her know what we needed for everything. Oh wow! So okay. they rented everything, um, but yeah, we set the uh, we set the tables. Um, we had to clear the tables, and we were supposed to rinse plates and rebox. We didn't have to wash them. We just needed to rinse them, um, okay. but the the venue wouldn't let us use the sink, so they just they had to scrape the best they could. So, um, hopefully, they're not getting charged. Did they? For, did the did the bride and groom expect you to like bring your trailer? No, 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 no. Oh, that's good. No, so yeah, they didn't need to be clean. They just needed to be. And she, yeah, we had talked about it all before. She's like, "Yep, there's a kitchen there, so it's no big deal." Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Hold yeah. on a second. I'd like some turkey. Uh, it actually is. Uh, no, it's roasted uh, chicken breast. My dog yeah. uh, he gets high uh, three times a day. <laughs> he's got he's got chronic uh, chronic bronchitis, so this calms his lungs down. Is what it is. So maybe I need to start getting high three times a day. Do you want chronic bronchitis? No. <laughs> You're acting oh, like really? a pansy with 104 temperature. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was a that was awesome. All right. Well, I mean that's, now. that's a pretty good learning experience. I mean, that's that's I like the concept of it. The concept's pretty good. It just as long as you you just have to make sure you have enough. It's almost like one person like per table. 
Yeah. Like we'd probably be probably be playing. I guess how did you figure out how much to put on each table? <laughs> we guessed. <laughs> oh, good. good to um I like I wasn't there. Um, but originally, yeah, I mean we Chris was gonna weigh out because they had a she was very well organized. She used to be a wedding planner. Oh, um, so she had everything, and then she also had a wedding planner there. So everything was very well organized. She has sent us seating charts with how many people were at each table. So in theory, we could have planned at least me the right amount of pounds per table, depending on how many people were at the table. Um, where it got trickier was like mac and cheese. And yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, well, it's a, a scoop per person, Chris. <laughs> Put that in the bowl. Um, but I think they ended up doing, so there's 20 tables. I think he ended up doing 20 equal servings. Ish. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so he divided, divided it up pretty equally. Um, there, he said there was nothing that was completely empty on any table. So everybody got what they wanted, and there was plenty of food. So. Did you supply? Was this like more like a, a, a plate versus like a sandwich kind of thing? Did you do buns at all, or we did rolls, rolls and butter? Gotcha. So yeah, the, the, uh, we did rolls and butter, and then cornbread. And Chris said there was there was tables that the cornbread wasn't even touched. Really? Yeah. God, anytime I bring cornbread anywhere, it's like one of the first things to yeah, go. Yeah, I mean, for us too. So, um, but yeah, I mean, and with family style, normally we just wrap up leftovers and put them in the fridge for whoever, and they can take yeah. them afterwards. But with family style, it's a little bit different because you got a lot of hands and places. Yeah, and you almost you almost can't unless. Yeah, you almost can't do that. That's what he asked me. He said, "What do we should we do?" I said, "I don't use your best judgment." <laughs> so I think a lot of it ended up in the in the can that was left over. Um, so, but yeah, that was my week. A lot of uh, a lot of lessons learned. Um, wear real shoes if you're going to move things around. Uh, it sounds like you need like steel tops too. Well, yeah. Probably not. I mean, something more than a little bit of rubber. Probably actually saved my foot. I mean, it probably the rubber absorbed all the all the, the impact force. So, but That's yeah, I'll, the I mean, I'll live through the foot thing. Yeah. Well. So you well, have a week. Oh Lord, have mercy. Um. So it was a short week, but it was more of uh, big things happening. So it was really just Friday, Saturday, Sunday this week. I feel like I was lazier than shit. Um, <laughs> Friday, Friday went okay. Um, unfortunately, I, I, and I don't know if how often this happens to anybody else. Uh, I, I, I thoroughly apologized and, and I'm the a-hole for, for doing it, but I double booked something and I called and I called the organizer. I, I was booked at a brewery like a long time ago. And then I picked up a subdivision without either. I thought it was a different day or something. So when I got the notification, oh, you're supposed to be here today and, or you're supposed to be here in two weeks. Uh, I called them and left a message. Nobody ever got back to me. I was trying to reschedule for either earlier in the week or something like that. And then out of sight, out of mind, completely forgot about it. So I showed up at the brewery. Everything was fine. And then I get a, uh, a message. Where are you? You're supposed to be at this place. And that's through the booking service that I use. I'm like, my my F up. I screwed up. I'm, I'm very sorry. I could, I'll call and apologize. See if I can make it right. And they're like, nope, don't worry about it. <laughs> so then I believe, I believe wholeheartedly in karma, like wholeheartedly in karma. So the brewery went well, got home, everything's fine, cooking for the next day. I was doing a, a kid's like soccer tournament from like 12 to three, Not, nothing big. And I'm like, well, barbecue for kids food. All right. So I did like 20 sales. Then I was supposed to go to, I could either stay there or I can go to a, a local distillery in Ann Arbor, which is like uh, 40 minutes away. 
And I'm like, and then, yeah, Sunday I have a big um, farmer's market that I always go to that I always sell out at and cook the most food I possibly can and still sell out in record time. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I'm like, should I, should I just stay in town or should I go? And I'm like, all right, well, I already told these people are gonna, I was going to come. So pack up and go. About halfway there, I don't hear anything, but I see smoke coming from my trailer. And I'm like, well, I got a spare. So if I busted a tire, okay, I'll, I'm close enough to an exit. So I pulled off to the exit. No, nope, tires, tires fine, not fine, but tire was rubbing on my wheel well because my one of my leaf springs broke. And this brings back really horrible memories to uh, going to a competition in Iowa and then being stuck under, you know, traveling to Timbuktu to try to find uh, leaf springs for our pal Mark's uh, fifth wheel. So I know how to fix it. I don't have all the tools. So I was kind of waiting for, it was at 4.30 on a Saturday. So of course, nobody's open. Uh, I actually got a hold of a trailer builder in Texas because they're an hour behind us, just to ask for advice. Just, just to, you know, is it worth limping home? He's like, you know what you can do? He's like, if you can jack it up, put a four by four block underneath that broken leaf spring and limp home. He's like, the weight will keep that block there and you should be okay. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't got one of those. So I couldn't do that. So I get out to, to kind of measure something and a truck pulled up behind me. And he's like, he's like, you all right? I'm like, well, what do you know about trailers? He's like, oh, a little bit, enough to be dangerous. I said, bust a leaf spring. He's like, I don't got one of those handy. <laughs> like I can get them. I just don't, I, I don't have all the tools. He's like, well, I happen to live like two miles down the road. Do you, uh, can you, do you think you feel comfortable just limping there and have somebody come, you know, pick you up to take you to wherever you need to go to get your parts? I'm like thinking to myself, well, we're out in the middle of nowhere. So he's either going to kill me or he's just really hungry. Good thing he was really hungry. Really hungry, yeah. So it's 5.30 by the time I got to his house. It was 9 o'clock before I left. Uh, it was a bitch to take one leaf spring off. And my leaf springs are four leaves, and I could only find five leaves. I had to put my spare on because, come to find out, I rubbed the inside of the tire raw. <laughs> <laughs> to basically like to the belt uh anyway so i was able to limp home took the back roads home my wife followed me and she calls me and she's like hey you got your lights on i'm like well yeah you see the running lights right yeah but i don't see your tail lights like how about now when i press the brake or when i do you know turn mm -hmm. signals nope God damn. All right. So I limp home, she follows me, everything's fine. I'm like, well, I can limp around town. I can go back roads to wherever I'm going. I'm not missing this farmer's market because if I don't show up, I won't get invited back and I can't afford that. Yeah. I've made like 20 grand from this farmer's market this year. And I uh, got there, everything was okay, took the back roads. And I showed the, the owner, he's like the piece of leaf spring and he's like, you know what people people would have just called and said they didn't they, didn't, they couldn't show up because of this that and the other thing i said you know what a i don't have your personal cell phone number and b i don't want to be on your daughter's shit list because she's the one who organizes all that. <laughs> he started laughing like crazy he's like is that what you guys think <laughs> he's like here's my cell phone number if you ever have a problem call me <laughs> we're not going to kick you out don't worry he's like we'll have a barbecue or have barbecue and a beer because it's at like a hard cider or apple orchard too so long story short, I sold out, did 163 tickets in like two and a half hours. And it was, they had four other trucks there. It was just amazing. And I limp home. Everything's good. This morning called the place and said, hey, like, I'm like a week ahead of time in my schedule. So I'm thinking I had something Wednesday. So at least I had today and tomorrow to get something fixed. Nope, got something tomorrow. 
So I called them, let them, asked them if I could reschedule their sub from Tuesday to Thursday. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. We can't guarantee you won't get the same number of people. I said, you know what? I just want to make it right. I don't want to cancel on you. You know, I, I want to be there. But driving an hour, not having safety in, in mind is not responsible. Yeah. It's like, no, I understand. Take, take care of your stuff. So each spring is $100. I'm upgrading from a four leaf to a five leaf because I know the trailer is heavier than probably what it was meant for. Mm -hmm. So they're going to replace all those. I got to go buy two more springs somewhere else and bring them because they don't have them in stock. And they said that it had everything done and the taillights figured out by Wednesday. And I told them, if you can do that, I will, Friday morning, I will bring down food and feed your feed your crew they're like nice. well we appreciate it so now it's just a waiting game until wednesday so now i'm on a commission till wednesday yay just adding on november dates <laughs> to make up for the lost time so other than that i at least hit my sales goals which is fine it's good yeah. So that's my story. Yeah, my stepson just threw up at school. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Obviously, you gave him something. No, why is it that I gave him something? Why well, you, could I have not gotten the germs from the other direction? Uh because that's all that's all you parents. That's what you parents say is oh my kids are bringing shit home all the time. Well, did the kid throw up yesterday? No threw up today therefore you gave him something yeah you've been, you've been battling this. there's also uh, three kids uh, from his school that weren't at his birthday party yesterday because they were sick oh well they were responsible i weren't around any of them <laughs> it wasn't around any of them <laughs> your your cold is affecting your grammar <laughs> <laughs> shut up oh and city barbecue was not good by the way just so you know i'm sorry i'm I was really still thinking about it. Their banana pudding was pretty on point, though. Yeah. But, but and the mac and cheese was warm, like it was nuked. But I came up specially. Sorry, I'm going to go on another tangent. Go ahead. Barbecue, barbecue restaurants have to step up. Like, food truck, most food trucks I know are all cooking fresh stuff. If it, Whether it's cooked fresh, you know, the, the, the night before and overnight. And I swear things are restaurants are reheated when i when my wife wants to have diarrhea of the mouth and tell the barbecue guy that i'm i own a barbecue food truck and i get the meat platter and you know it comes out and i'm like i don't know i really want to try their ribs and i knew i was going to be disappointed and it's like you gave me end bones yeah. like you give me end bones and then okay i'm okay even if you want to take a a sauced rack of ribs that are that are i'm not going to say cold but that are lukewarm and then put them on the char broiler to get some char to them okay i'm okay with that but you don't do it to an end bone that's already charred to begin with yeah it was like rib jerky <laughs> anything because i'm not that guy but it's just like just step up people step up anyway sorry go ahead i i don't i had nothing but I, yeah, we didn't have, I didn't have a good experience when I was there either. Um, yeah, I was, it sounded like it was going to be good. Like, why don't barbecue restaurants offer, and maybe we just go, the, we don't have good ones around here. They, if, if you get brisket platter or whatever, why don't they say, do you want, do you want lean or fatty or lean or moist or something like that? Why, why just assume that somebody wants a lean piece of brisket or maybe they just don't offer it and that's fine. Tell me you don't offer it. Never mind. Anyway. Well, because these are all chains, Skippy. Oh, I get it. But where their, kid, their kids work in there and they don't know the difference and they don't know how to cut a brisket. You know? They got three old hickories out there. I know. You figure they know how to cook a brisket. I bet There's you no they're not they're not the ones doing it. You got a guy that knows how to cook them, and then that's the end of that. He slices them all and then he leaves for the day, comes back the next night. So. I did try my first uh, foray into making my own rubs. Yeah. Ritual. Sorry. Uh, 
I did the salt and pepper kind of Texas style rub and I cooked a brisket with it, wrapped it in butcher paper. It was pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best one I made, but it was pretty good. I need of course like Forrest Gump there. Good. It, it was pretty um, good. <laughs> uh I think I need cr like a I, I got restaurant grind or kind of coarse grind pepper. I think I need cracked, like just bar like barely opened, or add more pepper than salt. I don't know. You look puzzled. I thought I just heard a door. Did your wife pick up the child and? No, my mother in law is. Oh. I don't hear a dog going. Oh, I mean, I hear, I hear a dog going. He's crazy. barking, but yeah, not. I don't know. Anyways, sorry. No, nope, it's all good. Just making sure I'm not getting murdered. Uh, well, at least, it's, at least you're on camera. <laughs> it was one of the two guys in the background. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what do we want to talk about today? I mean, since I'm off for a while, you're, you're working yourself to the bone. I mean, What's the first thing you're going to do in your off-season? I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. In the trailer. Um, Are you getting a second trailer? In the off-season? Yeah. Um, no. Um, I, it looks like – sorry, I'm just checking to see if I got um, – I'm waiting to hear back from – my health department and if i can get an exception without having to be relicensed uh to carry soup and press sandwiches um apparently they're taking it all the way down to my individual guy to make the decision really? which I was, yeah i this yeah i keep getting forwarded to a lower level person so yeah that she said consult your your inspector so and that dude's super cool <laughs> so I don't think it'll be any problem. Um, so I think, yeah, we're going to probably do some lunches okay. um, with some uh, grilled sandwiches and soups. Uh, just uh, so we're not burning through uh, savings through the winter, paying bills and stuff. So we have Verizon bills and, I mean, insurance bills and all the other bills that keep coming all winter long still. Yeah, um, bill, bills, bills suck. Yeah, they yep. definitely... So, yeah, I mean, and we still have another three trailer payments to make. So, um, it would be oh. nice to start in March. Start March without having to think about if we have enough money to buy food for more than a couple of days at a time. <laughs> so, which is pretty much where we've been. I mean, not pretty much, but I mean, yeah, it's you to get to February, like you start looking at the money a little bit closer, like, yeah, we're going to make it. Till we open again um but yeah it'd be nice to to not be in that position and if i can do three days a week or something like that and and with sandwiches and soup the margin's a whole heck of a lot higher so um yeah i really don't need to pull the same sales that i'm pulling now which i wouldn't expect to at all um so, in the winter months so all right let me ask you a question Okay. People know who you are. Yeah. People people know who, that you're a barbecue truck. Kind of a big get deal. Uh, you absolutely are. Um, how is it that you feel comfortable changing changing of the game if people know who you are? Like, are you still going to be cooking barbecue too and just no. offering them sandwiches? Nope. So straight. I lack a better word. I mean, I'm just trying to be simple here and say deli meat wrap sandwiches, whatever, but it's not anything that's typically under normal men. Right. How, how do you feel that'll go over with your regulars? I think, okay. I think we have enough credibility. Will it be good long-term? I don't know. But so I think people will show up at least a couple of times, you know, and it's a, and, it, and it'll, it, it's all about how you market it and promote it. And it's a, 
it's a, a winter menu and trying out some new concepts. Most of our regular customers know that we're planning a second trailer and know that we are multiple trailers are in the in the works. So um, that's not a secret. So you're using this to test the concept. Yeah. If, if, if there is, okay. So it's not- If it works in the winter, it'll work in the summer. Well, yeah. We so, have a grill. We have a grilled cheese truck over here. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I mean, if I can, if I can, I mean, we'll still have like, we'll do the Cubans. Um, so yeah, we'll still smoke the pork loins and for the pork for that. And, but yeah, I'm not going to do brisket and pulled pork. It's just too much. Um, from a cost, there's just not, there's not enough margin there. Yeah. And I'm not comfortable banking on the transactions coming through in January, February. No, oh, yeah. So, so I'm counting on a lower transaction, higher margin item. Make sense? Yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure I'd lose my ass if I did barbecue through the winter. And my trailer would be a mess. <laughs> yeah. Do you get do you get calls or, or messages through the winter about catering? Do you even worry about catering during the winter for like corporate lunches or stuff like that? Will you will you do it or do you kind of just say I'm, I'm not available because the barbecue side of my business is shut down. Yeah, we, no, I wouldn't do it. No, I, yeah, the, that bar, that no barbecue at all through the winter. Really? It's, it's just too much of a mess, Bert. I, I can't keep grease off my trailer now. I know. I Listen, I, I understand the whole grease thing. I fucking hate it's, it. It's awful. Yeah. I don't want to have to deal with it. I, that's the biggest thing. And I don't want to have to I'm going to pull my trailer to a very select number of places for this winter. Um, yeah. And I don't want to get caught booking a corporate event and then having some really shitty ass weather. Yeah. I'm feeling obligated to have to get there too. I, so if I have a location at, like at our, our normal Tuesday gas station location for lunch, if it's shitty weather, I'm not going to have any qualms about saying, Nope, we're not coming. You know, well, I get that. So, um, and the best part of soup and sandwiches, I'm not out any money if we don't open for a day. Yeah, it's it's held over because it's all you know cold to begin with. Right. Yeah. So, um, will you do mac and cheese? Uh, maybe, but maybe, maybe. <laughs> I hate boiling in, in much smaller quantities. I hate boiling noodles. Well, it's already starting to take longer for me on my trailer. So the water's still hot, but the, the pot's so cold that <laughs> it yeah, cools right. off the water as it's going into the pot. So, so it's you taking don't... 10 minutes longer right now for me to boil water in my trailer than it did a month ago. So you don't have your like your heat strip in your in your air conditioning going all, at all? Huh. I guess I don't, I don't understand why you wouldn't. You have a 30 amp cord plugged in. Why wouldn't I have the heater running? Yeah. Because it does, I don't need it. It's still like no. 50 degrees in there. Oh. Right. Which isn't, and by the time I turn, so, yeah, I turn on the, the warming cabinet first thing in the morning and then you fire up the stove top. You also still it's have It's 75 degrees in there by 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, it's just the, the from the pot being so at 50 degrees, you put 120 degree water in it, and all of a sudden it's 70 degree water, 80 degree water. Yeah, it takes a long time to warm up 80 degree water in a pot of six gallons. <laughs> so, yeah, it does. Um, that's all. I mean, it's not a huge deal, and I have time, so yeah, I mean, I so I, I understand what you're doing, I'm just since you've already, I guess, already made it known that you're looking into a second truck and a second concept, stuff like that, that it should, it shouldn't hurt you. Do you I don't, I don't think it would you? hurt. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't see how it could hurt anything. Well, it's just everybody, people, people that might come to you once or twice a month that see you out somewhere and stop, oh, hey, I'm hungry for barbecue and they show up to your trailer and you don't have it. Yeah, I know. I will definitely have those people, but I don't think it's, well, I'm never coming here again. Well, I don't think so either. Yeah. 
Like, I don't think I could do that because I'm still trying to build. Yeah. Well, you kind of did for the first month you were open. No, Until I Until you settled start. on a menu. <laughs> I had specials. I still have the same things that were on the original menu on this menu. The exception of nachos because they don't sell. For me, they don't sell. Sorry. Sold 15 on Friday. Chris was very happy. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's weird that we fly through them and you you can't sell them. I there's one place that requests me to bring them all the time, <laughs> and even at the local brewery that I was at Friday, where they posted my old menu for the 800th time, after I sent them the new one and I posted underneath their Instagram post the new one, I had one person ask for nachos. <laughs> yeah, and it's I. I do it for the one brewery that I go to, which is, which is good because I'll sell like, I don't know, 10 of them there. So, but yeah, we actually have our one year anniversary party coming up. We're actually, this is uh, I think this is one year anniversary weekend. Truly. Yeah. You don't know your date. Uh, it was, I can find it. It was October. I know that. July 19th, 2019 for me. The first order we took. Uh, it was Saturday, October 10th, 2021. So today. Yeah. The anniversary. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the, the next event I did was the 17th. So <laughs> that was still Saturday. Um, all right. So uh, I got another topic since I, I'm the one talking today. Um. So I, did I tell you about the the local brewery that? So I did I did good the first couple times I was there, and then ever since it's kind of dropped down. They had like horrible parking, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, just a quick note: uh, we had about ten minutes before I'm gonna have to get off. Oh, that's, so I'm utilizing local community Facebook pages to kind of just ask questions about where like. Does everybody like food trucks? Would everybody like to see a food truck in their community? Would everybody, does everybody support food trucks? What's the reason that you don't think food trucks work in certain parts? Um, and I guess the moral of the story is just utilize, utilize community Facebook pages if you can, um, because I've received a lot of great feedback about this specific spot. Mm -hmm. And the spot's great, but and the people are great, but the parking is absolutely horrible. And that's what people were telling me was like, hey, the parking sucks. So if we're not really going to go downtown in this area because we can't find a place to park, just to walk a half a mile to you guys. Right. And I, I completely respect that. But yeah, so moral of the story, you utilize community Facebook pages. Yeah, we, uh, I try to share a lot uh, for our daily posts to whatever community Facebook page we're in for the day. Um, yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a member of a lot of groups. Um, but that's kind of what you got to do, you know, um, and a lot of them have weird rules and won't let you promote, um, which makes it a little bit more challenging than how you approach things. But, um, that's, Wego was that's, one of those. That's my off season goal is, is learning more about promotion and advertising and focusing on all parts of the business, not just what I do day to day. Right. Yeah, Nuego's Facebook group won't let you uh, promote any business at all. So, which makes um, no sense. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> makes no sense. Um, well, I, I get how it can it can quickly turn into spam, but you got moderators. Just fucking moderate. You know. Well, supposedly, if they start a group and they make you ask questions, it takes the it takes the bots out of it, or it takes the, well, the scam. Yeah, but I mean, people like pushing like Beachbody or all the other. Yeah, hammering the Facebook page with all that stuff. Um, I get that they're trying to keep that out, but yeah, whatever. So <laughs> a couple of years ago, I resulted to seeking help for an event that we were going to be at because you could do employment ads there, like gotcha. looking for help. So that's what I did. Whenever we were going to be in the area, I was like, could use a couple of extra hands uh, for the weekend and then turn everybody down that said they were willing to help because I didn't actually need help. Oh, so the people that really wanted money, you just completely destroyed their dream. 
Yeah, <laughs> destroyed their dreams. They're homeless now, living, living in a van down by the river. Because yeah. they couldn't work for you. Yeah, for one day. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so uh, so you're going to work on your marketing stuff in the off-season. But you, your off-season is a lot shorter than mine. You're booking in November mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, I have, a, I have like four dates in November right now. But it's okay. just, it's like day after Thanksgiving kind of stuff. It's nothing huge. But so what are you doing in the off season? Doing like I'm the goal is to take it off if I can. Right. Remember the conversation we had like a yeah. month ago. <laughs> it's more of making sure the bills are paid. Like my last day of really working on the trailer, I'll pay the mortgage up four months. I'll pay the truck payment up four months, and then just go day to day. But I do want to. I the other thing I want to focus on is cater. I'll cater in the winter time. I don't give a shit. But I want to make sure that the trailer needs. I had somebody offer to buy it. That was interesting. Once I get it fixed, <laughs> I'm like, huh. I do want a new one. The wife. The wife told me the other day. She's like, I'm going to make you sign something that says you're not going to get another smoker. You're not going to get this. Not going to get that. I said a new trailer is not going to be on there. <laughs> Um, I, I think there's other stuff I want to do, but my mind is like, it's never enough. Like whatever I have is never enough. Do I want to keep doing the same thing, the same menu, like over and over and over again. And that's the only part of this business that's painting me is I like to do other stuff. I want to showcase what I can do. And, but I also don't want to be another grilled cheese truck because there's always another one. I don't want to be a burger truck because there's hundred burger trucks. I would do want to be something that's unique. That's why you need a second trailer. Yeah, but then you got to find people to run it. Yeah. I don't have people to run it. Not yet. Have you looked for people yet? No. No. See? You know why? Because I, I, it's hard for me to get rid of control. Like you've worked with Chris long enough. You, you trust him to make everything the same way you would. I know. That's why you need somebody now. And you then give it a couple of years and they shadow you and learn everything and they are as anal as you are. And then that truck pays your bills while you fiddle around with other stuff on another trailer. I'm, uh, we talked about layers of risk. <laughs> exactly. Let me, let me make sure. Oh, and for everybody that's, uh, that's listening, uh, go to my Facebook page. And uh, shoot me a, a, a vote if you've ever had my food. Or we're, we're in the running our first year to be the best food truck in our, our fair city. So that'd be oh, nice. Jackson. Yes. Good luck, by the yeah. way. I voted for you. We actually have a QR code that I that I put on a A-frame sign <laughs> to try to get votes. <laughs> Listen, I'm new. There's a pizza guy who's been here forever. He'll probably win. That's fine. But if I get top three, um, the top three get uh, stories like done about them. Oh, nice. So I'd love to be able to get into the top three and at least have that that to my name. Man, I won and I didn't even get a story. Oh, well. I just got a listed. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even get a plaque? I'll get you. I got a, a window cling. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's pretty small. <laughs> Yeah, like that big. But I got like they sent me like a hundred copies of of the thing, so I'll do something with those. Just so you know, nobody could see that. Yeah. <laughs> it blended into the background. Oh, did it? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, well, I, hope, I hope your week goes great. Uh, have me in your prayers and thoughts for for this week. Yeah, and, uh, I, I hope that all the trailer issues are behind you, Bert. Um, uh, after this, after this week, I had to buy a new jack, so I got to put that on. Uh, but at least the suspension part, hopefully, will be done. That's the major part. So yeah, yeah at Knock least the jacks wood. are easy to replace. Knock on wood. Yeah, <laughs> jacks are easy. I, I hope they can figure out my lights. That's the biggest thing. I bet you something just got snagged when the. Suspension broke. I hope so. I bet you they said it. Yeah. I bet you they spliced it back together and it's fine. That'd be my guess. I hope so. Yeah. 
Lights are easy. Because otherwise it'll be for sale. Because I'm just done trying to fix it. It's cost me more money. <laughs> and next call is to Southern Dimensions. <laughs> to order now, you might have it by the spring. <laughs> I've had they're they're like bookmarked on my on my iPad. I look at I look to see what they have, might have in stock. <laughs> I don't think they carry anything in stock. They got stuff listed in stock. I don't think they do. No. I think it's just for you to call them to ask about it, and then they're like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say I want that one. When can I pick, come pick it up? Oh, June of 2024. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I saw one on there, and I like Facebook messaged them asking them about that particular unit that they had listed on Facebook. I'm like, yep, give us a call and we'll talk about your custom trailer. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I want that one, the one that you had listed that said it's ready. Yeah, it says there. Please, damn it. Yeah. Well, I hope you feel better. Hope your kid feels better. Step kid, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna get blamed for all that. <laughs> Told you. Probably rightfully so. Yeah, told you it was you. All right, buddy. You have a good week. I will talk to you soon. All right, good luck this week. We'll see you soon. See you, bud.